Hello, this is Dr. Amin Marashi, Retina Specialist in Marashi Eye Clinic in Aleppo, Syria. I am presenting the course of OCT for macular diseases. In the previous presentations, I discussed the retinal vascular diseases. In this presentation, I will discuss OCT's clinical applications in non-neovascular age-related macular degeneration AMD, including early AMD, moderate AMD, geographic atrophy, and advanced non-neovascular AMD. OCT can accurately depict the number, type, location, and size of drusen and retinal and choroidal changes. Drusen appear in different sizes, shapes, and can be homogeneous or heterogeneous content. Drusen is deposits of extracellular yellow material between retinal pigment epithelium (RPE) and Brooks membrane, mainly consisting of lipids and fatty proteins and can be present as solo findings or associated with retinal or choroidal changes. Small drusen size is less than 63 microns, and when there are only a few of them, the case is not accounted for each related macular degeneration. Small drusen are called hard drusen. They usually appear as a small elevation of RPE with hyperreflective content without any disruption of the ellipsoid zone or external limiting membrane. However, an increased hyperreflectivity adjacent to the drusen is an alternation of the hilly layer and shouldn't be mistaken with interretinal pigmentation. In contrast, intermediate drusen are when the drusen size is between 63 and 124 microns and can be responsible for early AMD when there is a combination of small and few intermediate drusen. However, when there is a numerous intermediate drusen, then the AMD is staged as intermediate. Intermediate and larger drusen are usually called soft drusen, which appear with more homogeneous continent and are associated with disruption of the ellipsoid zone, responsible for decreased vision. In contrast to hard drusen, the soft drusen can be associated with intraretinal pigmentation, which appears as hyperreflective foci in the outer retinal tissues, which may cast shadow artifact in some cases. Larger drusen are when drusen are more than 125 microns. The presence of one larger drusen is enough to grade the AMD as intermediate. And when the larger drusen can reach more than 500 microns due to the accumulation of drusenoid material between the RPE and Brooks membrane, it forms drusenoid RPE detachment. However, it has the same features as the soft drusen such as disruption of the ellipsoid zone and interretinal pigmentation that may cast a shadow. Drusenoid RPE detachment may have worse prognosis than soft drusen. In cases with early and intermediate AMT, the choroid will appear normal and within normal thickness. Drusen can appear with heterogeneous continent. This is due to the regressing process of the drusen, which appears with internal hyperreflective when it is calcified and usually associated with RP atrophy. In contrast, when the drusen appear with internal hyperreflective, then the drusen are in the regressing stage and developing RPE atrophy and calcification. OCT is handy to monitor the changes in drusen size, content, and quantity, as in this case, where drusen have increased in size within 12 months follow-up. When drusenoid material is accumulated in the subretinal space, then it forms reticular pseudodrusen that can be located between the ellipsoid zone and RPE, alternating or breaking the ellipsoid zone contour which may hold prognostic factor for development of advanced AMD. RPE can be atrophied completely or incompletely in cases of incomplete retinal pigment epithelial and outer retinal atrophy in age-related macular degeneration, the RPE is not completely atrophied. It, is, it will be presented with increased reflectivity 
of the underlying choroid with attenuation or disturbance of the RPE layer with or without outer retinal atrophy, including ellipsoid zone degeneration. In contrast, when RPE is completely atrophied, it will show loss of the RPE layer. Only Brooks membrane is visible, with increased reflectivity of the choroid due to the absence of RPE to reflect light. Nevertheless, it will be associated with the loss of ellipsoid zone and external limiting membrane. When RPE is completely atrophied, it will induce geographic atrophy, which can be presented in cases of intermediate AMD when the geographic atrophy is non-central. In contrast, advanced non-neovascular AMD, the geographic atrophy is central involving. Hence, OCT is very useful to locate and measure the geographic atrophy. One of the most important presentations of non-neovascular advanced AMD is the presence of a disciform subretinal scar, which in OCT appears as consolidated homogeneous subretinal fibrosis associated with the ellipsoid zone and external limiting membrane disruption. Sometimes these cases are presented with outer retinal tubulation, which appear in outer retinal tissue with hyperreflective border and hyporeflective and hyperreflective content, which resemble enclosed photoreceptors and RPE cells. Interretinal cystic changes are not signs of active choroidal neovascularization. Instead, they are a sign of interretinal cavitation due to degenerative process. However, the retinal thickness may appear normal in these cases. It is important to remember that choroid may appear thin in cases of advanced AMD. Although AMD is disease which is taking place at the choroid, Brooks membrane, and RPE, however, some cases of AMD may be presented with vitromacular interface abnormalities such as a peritoneal membrane. Thank you for listening. I hope you find this information useful in your daily clinical practice. Please stay tuned for the next presentation where I will talk about the clinical application of OCT in neovascular age-related macular degeneration.